In today's lecture, we will discuss a fundamental aspect of our constitution that upholds the principles of equality. Let's start with Article 14, which guarantees equality before the law and equal protection of laws. Article 14 of our Constitution is a beacon of justice that proclaims that the state shall not deny any person equality before the law or equal protection of the laws within the territory of India. This provision does not discriminate based on citizenship. It extends these rights to all persons, whether citizens or foreigners, including legal persons such as corporations and companies. The principle of equality before the law finds its roots in British jurisprudence, while the concept of equal protection of laws is drawn from the American Constitution. Equality before the law signifies that no special privileges should be conferred upon any individual, and all people are subject to the ordinary law of the land, administered by regular law courts. It establishes the principle that no one, regardless of their social or economic status, is above the law. On the other hand, equal protection of laws ensures that individuals in similar circumstances are treated equally under the law. It mandates that similar laws apply to all who are similarly situated, emphasizing fairness and non-discrimination. The Supreme Court has emphasized that Article 14 does not apply when equals and unequals are treated differently. While it prohibits class legislation, it does permit reasonable classification of persons, objects, and transactions by the law. However, such classification must not be arbitrary, artificial, or evasive, it must be based on intelligible and substantial distinctions. The concept of rule of law, which includes equality before the law, is one of the core principles of our constitution. It was advocated by the British jurist A. V. Dicey and encompasses three aspects, absence of arbitrary power, equality before the law, and the primacy of individual rights. In the Indian context, the constitution is the source of individual rights, unlike Dicey's theory, where individual rights predate the constitution. The Supreme Court has held that the rule of law embodied in Article 14 is a basic feature of our constitution, making it immutable even by constitutional amendments. However, there are exceptions to the principle of equality before the law. First, the President of India and Governors of States enjoy certain immunities under Article 361. Second, persons engaged in publishing substantially true reports of parliamentary proceedings are protected by Article 361-A. Third, Members of Parliament and state legislatures enjoy immunity from proceedings for anything said or any vote given by them in the House, Article 105 and Article 194. Fourth, Article 31-C provides an exception to Article 14, stating that laws made for implementing certain directive principles cannot be challenged on the ground of violating Article 14. Fifth, Foreign sovereigns, ambassadors, and diplomats enjoy immunity from criminal and civil proceedings. Sixth, the United Nations and its agencies also enjoy diplomatic immunity. Now, let's move on to Article 15, which prohibits discrimination on certain grounds. Article 15 states that the state shall not discriminate against any citizen on the grounds of religion, race, caste, sex, or place of birth. This provision, however, uses the critical term only, implying that discrimination on other grounds is not prohibited. The second provision of Article 15 goes further, stating that no citizen shall be subjected to any disability, liability, restriction, or condition on the grounds of religion, race, caste, sex, or place of birth with regard to access to public places or the use of public facilities. Notably, this prohibition extends to actions by private individuals. There are four exceptions to this general rule. First, special provisions can be made for women and children. Second, special provisions can be made for the advancement of socially and educationally backward classes, as well as for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. Third, 
The state can make special provisions for the advancement of these groups in terms of admission to educational institutions. Fourth, the state can also provide for the reservation of up to 10% of seats for economically weaker sections of citizens in educational institutions. The 93rd Amendment Act of 2005 introduced the provision for reservation of seats for other backward classes, OBCs, in central educational institutions, providing a significant stride towards social justice. However, the concept of creamy layer was introduced to exclude advanced sections among the OBCs from the benefits of reservation. The Supreme Court's directives have played a pivotal role in defining and implementing this concept. Furthermore, the 103rd Amendment Act of 2019 introduced a 10% reservation for economically weaker sections, EWSs, in educational institutions and public employment. This landmark amendment allows persons from EWSs to benefit from these reservations if they meet specific income and wealth criteria. Now, let's discuss Article 16, which guarantees equality of opportunity in public employment. Article 16 states that no citizen can be discriminated against in matters of employment or appointment to any office under the state based on religion, race, caste, sex, descent, place of birth, or residence. Four exceptions to this general rule exist. First, Parliament can prescribe residence as a condition for employment in specific regions or states. Second, the state can provide for reservation of appointments or posts for socially and educationally backward classes or scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. Third, Laws can mandate that incumbents of certain offices related to religious or denominational institutions belong to a particular religion or denomination. Fourth, the state can provide for the reservation of up to 10% of appointments or posts for economically weaker sections. The Mandal Commission, established in 1979, recommended a 27% reservation for OBCs in government jobs. This recommendation was implemented in 1990 and faced legal challenges. Ultimately, the Supreme Court upheld the constitutional validity of OBC reservations with certain conditions, including the exclusion of the creamy layer. The 77th Amendment Act of 1995 allowed reservations and promotions for SCs and STs. The 81st Amendment Act of 2000 nullified the 50% ceiling on total reservations in backlog vacancies. In 2019, the 103rd Amendment Act introduced a 10% reservation for EWSs in public employment. This reservation is applicable to those who meet specific income and wealth criteria and do not benefit from existing reservations. Lastly, let's discuss Articles 17 and 18 which deal with the abolition of untouchability and titles, respectively. Article 17 abolishes untouchability in any form and prohibits its practice. The Protection of Civil Rights Act, 1955, strengthens this provision and defines civil rights as rights resulting from the abolition of untouchability. Article 18 abolishes titles and prevents the state from conferring any title except military or academic distinctions. It also prohibits citizens from accepting titles from foreign states, except with the President's consent. Foreigners holding certain positions under the state cannot accept titles from foreign states without presidential approval. The Supreme Court has upheld the constitutional validity of national awards, such as the Bharat Ratna and Padma Awards, as they do not amount to titles of nobility. In conclusion, Article 14 along with Articles 15, 16, 17, and 18, place a pivotal role in ensuring equality, justice, and social harmony in our diverse nation. These constitutional provisions reflect our commitment to the principles of justice, fairness, and non-discrimination, and they continue to guide us on the path toward a more inclusive and equitable society. Thank you.